Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. Um, we're continuing our C++ tutorial, tutorial for beginners here. And if you've got this far, congratulations, because we've, we've covered a lot of topics um, without uh, so far building um, an actual program that actually does something. And in the rest of this tutorial, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to build this program. I've called it Particle Explosion. Let's just run this. And what this is, is um, it's a program that manages uh, a bunch of virtual particles which appear on the screen, gradually change colour and kind of circle around each other. We've also got a nice blur effect here going on as well. The reason I've chosen to build this program is, um, well, a variety of reasons. One reason is that it gives you an extremely good workout with C++. So we're going to see some new concepts in the, concept, in the context of creating this program. And uh, some of those are going to be uh, quite tricky, but I'm going to explain everything as we go along, uh, along the way. This also uses some mathematics, but don't worry if, you're, uh, if your mathematics is not so good, because um, we'll just be using some simple stuff like trig functions, and you, you don't need to understand trigonometry. To, uh, to be able to build this, you can just use them. This is my favorite bit, by the way. We get this sort of nest of white particles which initially have a kind of blue fringe. Um, another reason I chose this, besides the fact that it, it really um, gets into some really good C++, is that um, it's, it's not just a pretty pattern. Well, this particular program is kind of just a pretty pattern. But firstly, particle explosions like this are widely used in, for example, games. So if you're interested in games programming, you will, you'll learn some of the basics of games programming techniques by following this tutorial. Actual particle explosions um, are, are often used to simulate fire or to simulate actual explosions in games. And they're also used in artificial intelligence. Uh, this is not an AI program, but you could adapt this without too, too much trouble to create a, a, a program that uses swarms of particles to actually, for example, find approximate solutions to equations, which is something that I've um, played with a bit in the past. And it's not too hard to get it to work. You can have all these particles here. Uh, you can think of them as being like a swarm of flies that are searching for food and um, you can get those virtual flies to search for food by finding the solution to an equation. So if, if you are interested in AI, you could take this further and build this into an artificial intelligence program. And if you're not, if, if, if like me, you quite like to see interesting patterns, then um, you, by, just by tweaking this program, you can create all kinds of effects. You can create fountains and you can get particles to bounce around the screen or um, orbit around each other or whatever. Lots of interesting things you can do. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I want to say for, for this tutorial. Oh yeah, and also if you are into mathematics, then these particle explosions give you a lot of opportunity for tweaking them and um, creating sort of mathematical simulations of how objects move. So um, starting in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build this and we're going to use SDL, which is a free uh, kind of games programming framework or a media framework for C++. It doesn't give you many facilities in the way of, for example, creating 3D games or anything, but it allows you to uh, draw stuff on the screen, draw images if you want to, and use sound as well. Now, actually distributing a program can be quite challenging. I'll, I'll make a few remarks about this, um, but um, creating installers and things like that are, is outside the scope of this tutorial. But for most platforms, you can probably, um, just by doing a bit of Googling, you can figure out relatively painlessly how to distribute this program. You'll just have to distribute a, a dynamic link library file along with it, which will be called .dll on Windows. and for this program I'm working on a Mac, it was .dilib. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into that a bit um, later on. Although, as, as I say, actually creating installers and things, that's outside the scope of this tutorial. 
Okay, so um, we'll start coding this in the next in the next video, and until next time, happy coding.